Hello everybody and welcome once again to Lawrence Place Factorio Angel Bobs. Here we are another another episode and so let's see the last episode I built up this um facility here for turning crushed stone well diluting it in, uh, no dissolving it in water and then flushing it away with this clarifier here. It doesn't seem like it's um quite as vital as it, as it was earlier. I think I've got through all of the backlog which presumably means I've managed to get my iron supplies back up to full again. Um, oh no, that is still flowing up here to the presumably the ammo factory. Yes, yeah, so there's still a certain amount of it going through, but it's not quite as. Oh, I see. It's it's not coming through as much as it was as fast as it was before because I'm running out of iron supplies. That's um, interesting and also <laughs> rather concerning. Uh, okay, so I should probably work out why why there's no iron coming in. Uh, what's my iron train doing? Here it is. Sapphire pickup. It's getting loaded up very, very slowly because it's um, being loaded by the individual inserters rather than stack inserters. Okay, well that leads me um, nicely on to my next um, thought, which is I've actually made a to-do list this time. So um, for once, I have a good idea of what I'm what I'm intending to do this episode, and probably, to be honest, in the next episode or two. And one of the first things on that list is to run around all of my mines up the top and make sure they're all using stack inserters to load their uh, to load the trains up, because as you can see from that one I was just looking at, loading trains up with normal inserters is a very very slow business, and it just means the trains take forever to load and unload, meaning you you run out of resources. So if I nip up there now, I think that's the first left here. Yes, I should probably put some more roads in really. So I don't end up driving through my um, along my railway lines. Okay, well I've got the um, coal mine first, so let's do let's do that one, even though it's not quite as vital. I'm putting down long handled inserters. There we go. And then what's what's the one further north? Let's go and do that while I'm while I'm here. I think that's Jeevalite actually, which is probably the least important of the mines I've got. But um, eh, I'm up here. I'll get it done. Might as well get it done. So. Another stack of stack inserters. This wall's a bit superfluous now because um, I've got another one above it, so it's uh, just there taking up space, getting in the way. Okay, so that's that's these three mines done. The Bobmonium one over there is that already? No, that's on the old mining, old style um, inserters as well. So I'll nip over and do that one. Hopefully without getting run over by the train that's going to it. Okay, so as you can see, those are going relatively slow relatively slowly at the moment but if I take the uh, stack inserters along here well for one thing they're much faster moving inserters and for another each time they swing they're taking multiple um, pieces of the ore admittedly I'm only at two a stack size of two at the moment which isn't that great but at least it's twice at least it's twice as fast and hopefully I can find some stack size boosting researches in fact let's have a look see if I can see if I can research um, some stack size boosts I can Right, so if I get that one, that'll get that'll boost up to three, and I can get the second one as well because that, that only requires two types of um, uh, two types. The first two sciences, the third one is going to require blue science as well, so that's going to have to wait. But uh, yeah, so that'll get me up to um, putting four in with each swing, so that's going to double the speed again over what it's got at the moment. And at that at that point, they're going to uh, load and unload the trains really quite quickly, so that's going to make that much more uh, effective. Okay, next thing. There's one more mine left. I might as well. For I don't think I'm actually getting through the um, oh, what's that? What's that resource? Rubite. I don't think I'm getting through the rubite all that quickly. So it's much less important to have that one using a, a faster inserter compared to say the uh, the coal or the uh, the styrotite. Again, I've forgotten which the um, the resource for the uh, for the brian is. But that one anyway. But for the sake of completeness, I'm going to come along and do this one as well. Right, so that's that one's done, that one's done, those three up there are done. Are all the drop-off points done? The coal one is. Why is that stopped? Oh, I've put in oh, put in long-handled inserters there. Okay, I'm gonna have to go and fix that. That's very important. These unloaders seem to be seem to be fine. They've been upgraded. They're running fine. They've been upgraded. They have. And then. Okay, so it's just that just the coal one that I screwed up. Let's go and fix that because coal is absolutely vital to the uh, to the war effort if you like um, because that's where all the ammunition comes from it's where um, in fact it's where most of the most of the general resources the factory uses comes from <clears throat> was I talking complete utter nonsense then I was talking about iron when actually I meant it was the coal that's oops when it's the coal that's the um, relevant thing at the moment I wonder if I can put up traffic cones or something around these things so I can warn myself not to drive into them 
I suppose I could use walls for that actually, maybe that'd be sensible. Right, here we go. And yes, I've put in long handled inserters all the way up here because apparently I'm an idiot. Another thing I was going to do here, because again, coal is very, very important, I think it'd be nice oh, I've run out of iron. I think it would be nice to have um, have it unload off both sides of the train. So that there's twice as much potential throughput. Um but there's no iron anywhere nearby, so I'm, that's going to have to wait. Okay, so stack inserters on everything. That was my first. That was my first task, and that's now completed. Second task was to um, consider express belts. I think I'm going to bump that down a step. And the next one is to consider um, consider faster trains or better trains rather. So at the m where are trains hiding in this? There we go. So we've got normal normal locomotives and normal cargo wagons at the moment. How do I reset? Where are better trains? Um, maybe it's under locomotive. Railway 2, yes, that's what I want. And then Railway 3. I can't afford Railway 3 yet, but I can get I can get Railway 2 once Stack Inserter bonus is finished. So I'll, um, okay, I'll wait for that. I think, as far as I'm aware, these are entirely cosmetic. The uh, Petrochem trains, the smelting trains, and presumably the construction trains all just are all just essentially skins for the normal trains. So I don't think they get me any bonuses. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, as is usually the case with Angel Bobs, there aren't re there's not very much descriptive stuff. Um, so there's nothing here telling me what these things are. There's nothing here telling me what the, the Railway 2 gets me. I just happen to believe that this gets me bigger um, cargo wagons. Storage size 60 versus storage size 40. Okay, so it's 50% bigger. It's not an enormous difference, but it's, it's, it's worth having. Okay, let's drop back to um, my previous second um, idea so that was going to be express transport belts so that's relatively relatively easy now so so what I'm gonna have to do here transport belts are interesting um, so for the um, the mark 2 construction things and the um, and so on and whatever else I built right down here at the bottom using up my bronze oh yeah the better inserters they're all pretty much you use one to make you use you make the mark ones and you make use those to make the mark twos and so on so if you look at the um, the construction machine, no, the the inserters are an excellent example of that. You make a normal inserter, then you make it make that into a fast inserter, and then you make that into a fast stack inserter. So bang, 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 those three along there. And the same is true with the uh, assembly machines. You make normal assembly machines, then you make Mark II assembly machines. And with the miners, again, as well, you make a Mark I miner, and then you make that into a Mark II miner. But the belts are a little bit different, because you need to turn, you make the, the normal belts, and then you make those into the undergrounds and the splitters, and also into the Mark II belts. And you make the Mark II belt, and, and so and so it branches out a bit more, and that makes the the layout a bit a lot more complicated. Um, so I'm gonna have to have a bit of a th think about that. Except my inventory's full again. Time for another rubbish chest. Uh, yeah, I'll do. So let me have a let's have a think about this. So what have we got? We've got belts. The belts are relatively straightforward. You've got the Mark I belts go into the Mark II belts with some extra. Uh, components into the Mark III belts with again with some extra components. That's that's okay. It's the other it's the other things like the um, the undergrounds take normal belts. Then these take basic underground belts, and these take the those aren't too bad. Actually, maybe it's not too bad. They are all just okay. The the um, the basic transport belts goes off to the other two, but then they but then each of those just goes down in a single thread. So let's see if I perhaps let's try and sketch this out a little bit. So if I make my undergrounds here. So my normal belts here, and the undergrounds and uh, splitters that there. Then I can make the Mark II. Well, I want to have them going into. In fact, no. Let's stop using the Mark ones. So those can go into boxes for the Mark II, uh, straight into the Mark twos, and then those I will take some of to make the Mark, and then to make, and then make the Mark threes. Now there are a lot of other components going into this, so hopefully, so I may need to wind some underground belts through here, but uh, we'll we'll see how that goes. Railway two. No, I've got rail. Uh, Oh, there's there's some prereqs for railway too. <laughs> okay, let's let's just run through these, get them all up and running. Okay, so you're going to be normal underground belts. You're going to be normal splitters. You're going to be undergrounds. You're going to be advanced normal belts. So basic normal, normal, and then the express ones down here. Let's see. So these take. One of the things I notice that's needed is um, a large quantity of iron, of various types of cogs. So I'm going to have how much space I've got? Uh, not a lot. Let's try that. Build up the cogs over here, so I can have an iron iron belt coming along here because everything requires iron. 
I'm going to get through a lot of iron. Are these ones as well? Yes, these require iron gears as well. And tin. But not actual, not, not simple iron. That's quite handy. And another belt that will carry my cogs. And then a third belt to carry wood and, st wood and stone. And then I'm going to need copper as well. <laughs> Crikey. So from this one I want stone on the side there. Stone. Stone. Okay, and on the other side I want wood, which is on this belt. This one is iron. And then somehow I have to squeeze copper in as well. I should have moved the whole thing. I should have started the whole thing about uh, five blocks lower. Um, but then that's always the way with Factorio. You never realise just how much space things how much, how much space things are going to take up until you've run out of space. So this row requires the stuff from the row above, of course, plus um, tin. And I'm going to need to wind circuit boards around here as well. So that's that's okay. This one requires the row above things, and it requires steel gears and bronze plates. And the, okay, that's. That's, no, that's all right. That's that fits in with roughly with what I was expecting. So if I bring, let's see, I'm going to bring the circuits in across the bottom. Well, in fact, actually, I could run them straight through the middle of here. Let's put some inserters in, just to get things, just wrap my, help me wrap my head around it. And then output like that. Do you need gears? You don't need gears. Okay, good. So I can put brief underground there and there and that allows me to put in a splitter there and there which means a long handle inserter can grab that a short handle inserter can grab that i don't even need iron on this one that's so going to be cogs that's going to be wood do you need iron you don't need iron but you do need belts you do need that i'm kind of worried that i'm going to have messed up the um long and versus short handled inserters for this let's can i hook this up yes Oh, that's all right. That seems to be working. Feed those. So we're going to need copper and circuits coming through here, and tin. I need to move that again. <laughs> Put that one there, and then oh, they're they're close enough. Okay, cool. Okay, so we have. Let's see. Let's have copper can come through there. That one has to be tin, and that one therefore can be circuits both times. Copper. Tin. <laughs> this isn't quite going to fit. Never mind. Is there anything up there? Oh, there is something up here. There we go. <laughs> and this is the, the wonder and the point of a main bus system. Is that all of your resources are close and easy to hand. So as you're building up, you can just go along and grab them all like this. And you know that everything is going to come straight across to where exactly where you need it. Now these circuits are, aren't actually needed here, they're needed on the other s side of the um, system. Actually, yeah, I could load them in from there. Yeah, that works. Um, same with the copper, it's not actually needed until right over here. There we go, that's my underneath, uh, so, no, my splitters hopefully. Good. Then we have, okay, now, now, now this is the, um, the interesting bit. I've put that in the wrong place, that should be there. And so probably should that one, and probably that one as well, because that will allow me to. Let's see. So I've got my, oops, supplies coming through like that. But we also along here, each of these needs tin, which you can get like that. And then we need the various types of circuits down here, and then of course the outputs like that. That won't be quite enough because I'm going to need brass, bronze and steel gears down here, but I'm nearly there. I do that and that and that and that. Now I just need one final belt coming across here, carrying bronze and steel gear wheels. Now the gear wheels will obviously be produced by another set of machines like those ones. And I think, to be honest at this point, I don't expect to use enormous numbers of red belts. They're mostly going to be there for when I have an, a crisis should we say, and need to um, pipe enormous quantities of stuff through down a single belt, like with my um, crushed stone disposal system, or when I need to have a long underground belt because the red ones are going to be even longer than the um, than the other sorts. So I'll load them up like that. Uh, you guys can build steel 
gears. Belt coming along there. Okay, under these boxes. Like that. Am I doing... I'm doing far side inserting. Let's do near side inserting. It's going to make it look a little bit... No, let's do far side. Um, and long inserting. Like that. So I need to have a belt of steel coming along here. And... So the bottom one needs to be steel, the top one needs to be uh, brass, bronze, whichever one it is. The one I've got, bronze. Oh, which I haven't put on the bus, really. Ah, oh, here it is. I have put it on the bus. Just, yeah. <laughs> so that goes there. The steel comes across here. Underneath that. Okay, I think I've got most of the stuff in now. I need, why, why is it not working? What have oh, okay. <laughs> I missed something rather important. These all require um, those cogs. Um, let's put them in on the other side of the tin belt. So if I do this, that will give me room to do this, and this, and this. <laughs> and of course I need to pull up all of this tin, and apparently an enormous quantity of copper with it as well, but never mind, what can you do? No, I'm actually making them. Yes. Looking at the way some of these inserters are going, I'm starting to think maybe I should have used stack inserters for them. Right, that's that's working. Um, you can tell because all three of the five absolute final products have got something in their boxes. Now it's not going particularly quickly, um, and the inter the only down the down slight downside of this is that the uh, yellow belt box won't fill up until this one's filled up first. Um, but you know, I think that's probably okay. Uh, I, it's just going to take a while to get there, and in the meantime, I can start thinking about something else. That's quite neat. Am I, am I actually producing enough iron gears? Not really. Okay, apart from the fact I'm not producing enough iron gears, that's quite neat. Let's move that up one. I can shove another. No, I can't. Huh. I'm now out of um, grey belts. Which is interesting because, in theory, okay, ignoring the uh, the factories further up north, but in theory, I'm not actually making uh, grey belts anymore, and that sort of means it's about time to start upgrading to faster belts on some of these um, feeds. That's going to be potentially quite a big job because, so, if for example I wanted to upgrade this iron one, yeah, sure, I could start at the bottom and start running up a uh, a yellow belt here. That's not a problem, but every time I get to one of these, I'd have to upgrade it manually. Um, now there is an upgrade planner option in the, um, I think, in the newer versions of Factorio, but I also believe that's another thing that requires bots, so it's not going to be any real use to me at the moment. However, I do note that my iron supply actually just isn't isn't sufficient. There's more of it being pulled through from here um, than it is able to create. So I think I'm going to add another thing to my um, to-do list, and there's a bit of an aside here, and I'm going to go up and I'm going to put in a lot more smelters here. Now, actually, the other part of that question is how well are these, is the input keeping up? Have I got enough crushers? And, yeah, maybe. <laughs> to, to get... Yeah, some of these are, some of these are backed up, some of them aren't. Um, I should go up and have a look at that and see if I can work out why some seem to be being more um, heavily used than others. So let's go and have a look at that. I think I ditched, ditched all my um, coal in here. Yes, I did. Let's take some of that back. Okay, so obviously part of the problem is that I started taking this bit apart when I was um, thinking about um, putting in, I forget what, something else here anyway. Um, but also, I mean, there's, let's see, there's two carriages being unloaded pretty much symmetrically. Fine. Crushers, those crushers, there's eight, the same number going off each belt, one belt coming from each each wagon. So again, that's that's okay. And then each of these belts splits into two there, two there, two there, and two here. So the only place where there's a um, a mix is down here. So maybe that means it is the problem is caused by the um, by my having uh, come in here and just dismantled all this stuff. So let's let's put this back and see if that makes everything see if it makes things um, a bit more even. And specifically, see if it means I end up pulling because up here. No, even up here it's not... Oh, actually, this one is pulling it through as fast as it can possibly create it, but this one isn't. I don't understand why there's a difference between these two. Okay, well, let's put in some more... How many of these have we got? Two. Okay, that's not really enough. Um, I've only got a little bit of stone. I shall get a lot more stone from here somewhere. And 
I shall start building, uh, and I shall put in a lot. Actually, can I make steel? Um, can I make steel furnaces yet? No, I can make steel chemical furnaces, but not steel furnaces. Okay, steel furnace requires advanced material processing. So another piece, another piece of research. But then there are only stone bricks and steel plates to make when I've got them. So I think, and they're they're a bit faster, aren't they? Because they, um, how do I find out how fast they work? This is how long it takes to make them, not how long they take to do things. Oh, crafting speed two. There we go. Compared to a bog standard stone furnace, which has a crafting speed of one. Okay, so they'll be twice as fast. Um, that's definitely worth doing. In fact, let's even interrupt in advanced nickel smelting to do that. So that's that one, advanced material processing. The oil-powered steel furnace is the same speed, but presumably runs on oil instead of coal. Okay, so that's not going to help very much. It's not going to. It's not going to make things faster, and it's going to mean I need to plumb coal and all uh, oil into everywhere around here to do that. Okay, sorry guys, I've um, I've yak shaved again. I thought, yeah, I'll go in and pull out all these furnaces and replace them all with. Um, I put in some more of them, and then actually no, I'd have to build those, and I might, and then I decided they might all replace them with the steel ones, and that requires some some waiting for the research to happen. So, still, there's um, yeah, a bit of yak shaving. So the other thing on the list of um, not to get put together is, um, is is looking into LTN. So LTN is going to be um, a bit of a challenge, I think, because it requires you to build your stations in a in a in a slightly more complicated way, should we say? Um, so the idea being that you have a parking area somewhere, and I'd probably put it up here in one of these empty spaces, where you just keep all of your trains, and then when one of your drop stations, so one of these ones, requires a a component uh, requires a, a supply of something the um the ltn mod will dispatch a train off to go and pick that up and then take it to where it's needed and then the train will go back to the parking area and the idea behind that is it means you can have your trains um you don't need as many trains for one thing so you don't have a train just sitting idly in a station waiting until it waiting until it fills up and then going and sitting idly in the um unloading station while it gets unloaded so as we've got at the moment this one is sitting here waiting for there to be enough or available for it to load up and then you've got down here, you've got this one just just sat there until there's enough space in these in these um, in the stations down here for it to unload. And that's a bit of a it's not a, it's not a waste of resources as such because trains are relatively cheap compared to everything else that goes into the system. But it does mean that um, you, it it uh, when you have more stations requesting a certain type of resource, it means you you don't have the same sort of level of um, you can't. You don't really want to have trains sitting in them all the time because then they can't go off and, and deliver stuff to a different station. Um, whereas LTN sort of works around that by just making sure that there's room in the station for it to unload and then only dispatching the trains as necessary. Now, quite a lot of this can be done without LTN, just using circuit conditions and things. But LTN, in theory, makes it um, a bit more organised and it enables you to sort of just have a smaller supply of trains. And generally, it's supposed to be a bit more a bit more organised. I also note that while I was just talking about that, um, the the research into um, advanced materials and therefore then the uh, the stone uh, sorry no the, the steel furnaces has finished, so I might as well um, put those together. So what does a steel furnace require? Oh yes, bricks and steel plates. So I've got a steel plate here. I don't have I don't have bricks though. I could bring bricks through down here, but I'd be a bit worried about getting in the way of my future belt expansion because if my next level of belts only requires I don't know zinc or something like that then I um, I don't really want to get in the way of it however I could throw something together on the other side of the bus or to be honest miles upstream because it's going to be relatively small uh, no I'm going to build more advanced trains I won't put it there it's not going to take it's not going to take a lot of space because it's just going to be building um, the more advanced uh, uh, furnaces in fact down here I'm just look at the moment. I'm being quite lazy. I'm looking for somewhere where I'm already pulling steel and um, bricks out in fairly close proximity to each other, like here, for example. <laughs> I could put in a machine here with a couple of inserters and an exerter and a box, and yeah, this one can make steel furnaces. Simple. Although I'm going to make those stack inserters because this is going to use a lot of a lot of resources. I also noticed that I'm running out of steel again, so that's something else I'm going to have to worry about. I'm going to write these things down as I think of them. So steel, production, and I have a feeling there's something else. 
Um, there probably was. Deploying all of these things is going to be a quite a big job as well. I'm going to have to wait for that to finish. I could rip up some of my old belt factories, I suppose. These aren't in use anymore. But no, that's, that's okay. Let's have a look at the a look at the steel production and see if we can work out why it's not making enough. And what's the limiting factor? There doesn't seem to be enough iron coming in. In fact, there isn't enough iron coming in. That's my limiting factor. There's there's gaps in this belt at the top here. That's disgraceful. I should be making a lot more iron than this. But this comes back to the um, the steel furnaces that I've just started building and everything else around here. And maybe this supply isn't fast enough. Maybe I need to. Maybe I need more crushers. I'll go and have a look at that in a moment. How many have I got now? Twelve. How many? How many do I need to sort of completely re replace the ones here? Four. Four times two times four. Thirty-two. I think. Might be sixty-four. Probably thirty-two. Either way, that's a while off. Let's have a look at how my defences are getting on with or with whatever's going on with the bite at the moment. Well, this one has decided it hates this rock, so I'll just yeah. Sure, carry on. <laughs> the defences here seem to be working. I mean, they're making slight damage to the dragon's teeth up here, but nothing too serious. Turrets are presumably racking up enormous numbers of kills. This one's got 266. Mm. Yeah, doing okay. Down here, there's a few more damaged dragon's teeth, but nothing. again, nothing serious. I don't seem to be picking up attacks anywhere else, which is quite nice. These ones... Ooh. <laughs> That's kind of scary, the fact that some of these are now starting to produce another generation, another tier of um, biters and different types as well. So the big ones are scary enough. In fact, I'm now getting huge ones, and not only huge, but I'm getting huge acidic, huge explosives and electric spitters and... oh dear. <laughs> okay. Fortunately, they don't seem to be attacking the base yet with those ones, but... Gee, that's uh... And this one hasn't... this hasn't generated anything too terrifying either. Right, now I can actually research railways too. Whether I'm going to be able to build any of them, I don't know. I'll need to look into that a bit more carefully. This side doesn't seem to have um, generated the same sort of levels of biters. What's my pollution like, actually? Is it... Okay, that's okay, not too bad. That'll be why there's so much more going on here, though. There's a lot more pollution being blown out this side of the base. So I'm getting all the attacks from there and then all the development there. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's get some of these... Um, Okay, look at these twenty. Oh, it's because it's yeah, it's waiting for the steel now. So if I get if I go and top up the iron production, hopefully that will have a trickle down effect <laughs> um, and get the steel production running a bit quicker. And the nice thing about these is they're actual just slot in replacements. They're the same size. They use the same fuel. They just run twice as quickly. Okay, that should help a bit. I think I'm also going to. Um, I think now all these things are being combined here. That needs to be up. I need to upgrade the um, these belts to yellow, or maybe even to, maybe even to red. Uh, I don't have any yellow splitters, so I'm going to nip down back down to the bottom and get some of those. Oop, if I can squeeze through without damaging too much. What did I run over then? What is that? Oh, it's a pylon. Here we go. How's this going? Hundreds, fifties. Let's go straight in and replace those. Um, splitters with the very fast ones and yeah all right let's run a very fast uh, belt up there as well and see how, see how that goes i suspect the um, input resources aren't going to be able to um, keep up with that but to be honest as long as it over as long as it's as long as there's more pressure at the top than there is at the bottom so as in as as long as the um, resources aren't being used up as fast as they arrive it doesn't matter if it's a fa if it's a faster belt than absolutely necessary i've overshot <laughs> miles right but the initial belts can obviously be left as they are. They've got plenty of spare space left on them. These ones, well, red is serious overkill here, but never mind. Oops, I didn't bring any, I didn't bring any red undergrounds. <laughs> Actually, so what I'll do here is um, just run the red belt straight through there, and then I can use a grey under grey underground there to take that through because I'm not using very much lead compared to everything else. I'm not going to have enough. Oops. Especially if I do that. I'm not going to have enough, am I? No. Let's go yellow for now, at least until I go and get some more. <laughs> well, it is um, it is sufficient, I suppose. It's a shame I ran out halfway up, but I can always come up and finish that off later. Is this getting longer or shorter? There we go. Belt balancer there while we're at it as well. What? I thought I just picked up a load of those. Okay, what did I just pick up? 
did. I picked up a load of steel furnaces. Oh, this is where I hadn't got to. Okay. Right, okay. Now the problem is clearly the um, the rate that I'm crushing at. Actually, no, it's not. It's the speed of these belts. Okay, that can be fixed. That's an interesting side effect. So, um, making these belts faster has removed the um, any sort of... In a, has, stopped, has meant these ones can get out every, all of the um, ore they're crushing, which means these ones aren't being used at all, which means it's basically now only using one side of the belt. So, ideally, I want to have twice as much resource coming in here. And I suppose the way to do that is to start using stack inserters on the outputs here, like that. So now this belt is fuller. My worry now is as to whether this train is going to be fast enough to bring the uh, bring the ore down quickly enough. Hmm. These are backed up, so let's carry. It. Let's finish off putting in the extra furnaces down here. Now what I've done now is I've tripled the amount of um, furnace power, for want of a better word, I've got. The question is, is the input healthy enough to use it all? I guess. Along here, it doesn't really matter whether I use normal inserters or fast ones. So since I've run out of normal ones, and I think I'm going to try and stop making them and using them. Just gradually upgrade everything to the better ones. Do I have any stone? I do have some stone. Can I make some furnaces? In fact, no, let's go and see if I've got some more steel furnaces now. Yeah. <laughs> I had a feeling I got these the wrong way around. There we go. So... Now I have three times as much smelting power, but I'm not sure I've got the um, stuff coming in quickly enough for it to really make take advantage of that. This is, yeah, I can see this getting stuck in places. So I think this means I need to go through, I need to upgrade these belts to yellows as well in order to have enough, um, enough throughput to actually to take advantage of the extra, um, extra smelters. Oh, actually, if I only upgrade as far as the splitters on each of these, then that's going to be good enough, because the splitters double the amount of throughput anyway by having two belts. So, <laughs> it's got to be good enough. Predictably, though, I've now got a very, very full um, belt of <laughs> belt of this crushed stone again. I think that's going to need to be made into a, um, into a red belt. Okay, I've, I've hit an hour of play now, so what I'm going to do is ooh, drive around that. <laughs> what I'm going to do is upgrade that um, that crushed stone belt so that I can I can be a bit more confident it's getting rid of it all at the right speed. I'll pick up some of these undergrounds as well. Um, and some of them. How am I doing for yellow belts? I'm about to generate a load, so that's alright. <coughs> In fact, let's unload some of these grey belts into here. Maybe I should move that one because it is in a very, very <laughs> unhelpful place. Okay, so I need to upgrade this to full-on red belt level. I've only got 60. That's not going to be enough, is it? Uh, nope. It's very easy to wildly underestimate how much belt you're using for these things. Oh, and this isn't keeping up. Wow. I was not expecting the clarifier to be a problem on this, to be honest. I might be able to make, make another one of those. Not without bricks and steel. Okay. Well, steel is here in small quantities. Bricks are just up here in enormous quantities. That was more bricks than I wanted. Can whack another one on the top of there like that. Power it, of course. Maybe I turn the... Oh, no, I've run out of stack inserters. That would be... I should probably turn these into stack inserters as well, because they are going as fast as they can, but they're not keeping this up to up to speed. In fact, I think the, um, the limiting factor here might be these. Uh, I'm not putting down long-handled ones, am I? Okay, that's doing, that's doing quite nicely. Um... Once I replace this with a red belt, of course, the amount of them using up here, the amount that these are going to be trying to pull through is going to go up. This is moving very slowly. Why is this not running as fast as it used to? I'm sure this used to be able to cope with a full yellow belt going in, but now it doesn't seem to be. Hmm. Not sure what's different there. I could replace these with Mark II build, um, construction, uh, assembly machines and these with steel assemblers, I guess. I don't know. But for now, this this will probably do. In fact, this will clearly do, given how little distance he's getting up here. Yeah, if I can, maybe I should just dump this entire red belt straight into there. That might be worth worth a shot, actually. Let's go and do that, and let's move that pipe that I keep driving into as well. There it is. Oh, I actually can't. There we go. Three. Oh, of course, because these require steel, and that's and I'm still very very short of that. 
very, very short of that. And they're getting through lead at quite a rate as well. Like, faster than it's being produced. Well, faster than it's being produced on one side, certainly. Okay, it's still down to the amount of steel, uh, the amount of iron that's coming in. But now, it's because this yellow belt isn't fast enough. So that's another, another place that needs reds. And I have a whole three of them, which isn't going to do it. <laughs> which isn't going to do any good at all. Okay, I think the number of problems are now starting to sort of spiral slightly out of control. Um, I mean, they're not enormously serious problems, but it's getting to the point where I'm, I'm picking up things that I need to sort out faster than I'm actually sorting things out. So, I think at this point, if I don't, if I don't stop now, it's just going to get more and more silly. So I'm going to call, I'm going to call a, call a halt to this episode now. I'll just tidy up the end of this, um, end of the bus here, because um, I like to keep it tidy, apparently, and it'll make for a good screenshot for the um, thumbnail as well. Okay, so I'm quite pleased with this um, belt facility here now. It's, um, it's, it's working quite well. It's producing, it's producing all the, all the, um, the belts I need, although admittedly not quite as quickly as I would like it to, but. For now, I mean the, the theory is good. It's just that my um, my steel inputs can't keep up with the with the uh, requirements. So yeah, I'd say that's um, gone gone together well. I'm quite pleased with that. For for once, I feel like I've completed an episode and I've done something useful rather than just sort of run around in circles, scratching my head and getting confused about how to make things. So yeah, I think that's gone quite well. As ever, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.